Hello and welcome to the Friday, August 25th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. John Grant, one of the students in our sans.edu bachelor's program, did as part of his internship create a little password generator that simulates keyboard walk password patterns. Keyboard walk password patterns are essentially when you are sort of hitting sequential keys on a keyboard like QWERTY. And, uh, well, uh, John, as part of uh, this uh, programming assignment, did uh, use ChatGPT for help. And some interesting lessons learned here from using ChatGPT. No real big surprise, but, well, you need good specifications. So initially, the results retrieved from ChatGPT to write a script like this wasn't really all that great. But then with some added instructions informing ChatGPT about the keyboard layout and such, it actually ended up with a pretty good result. As always in development, well, having good clear specifications, of course, helps arriving at a good result. And password lists like this are, of course, very useful in order to look for weak passwords. Uh, We do see a lot of these password walk patterns, for example, in our SSH logs as people are trying to brute force passwords. And the FBI released one of its flash advisories stating that if you are running one of the Barracuda ESG devices, double check if it doesn't have a backdoor installed. There was this famous CVE 2023-2868 vulnerability that was patched earlier this year, but it was exploited starting October last year. The FBI states that uh, this exploitation happened in significant numbers, many of these devices were set up with multiple back doors. So just patching the device is not necessarily sufficient. And they are observing continuing attacks against devices after they have been patched using these back doors left behind by the attackers. The advisory does include a number of indicators of compromise like domain names, IP address and the like. But really one of the problems is that probably people who patched devices didn't look careful enough uh, for these back doors. I believe that uh, Barracuda even had at one point sort of a recall uh, option where you could uh, send your device back and exchange it because it is so difficult to really make sure that these devices are clean and are not infected. It's a very common problem where people just well patch and move on or remove one piece of malware and move on and forget additional backdoors that are then later used to gain access to compromised systems. And well, I've mentioned Ivanti Sentry a couple times, I think already this week, we now have a detailed walkthrough of the vulnerability by Horizon 3's James Horseman. This walkthrough has tons of details about the patch. What essentially did is they diffed the last patch in order to see what the vulnerability is possible all about. And it does include proof of concept code in order to execute arbitrary code. One of the issues appears to be that uh, the services endpoint in the API just doesn't have any authentication. Then later, some other endpoints and functions are exposed that are actually then leading in one case to the remote code execution, where you can just simply pass a shell command to be executed as part of a Python dictionary. So relatively straightforward to exploit. And as a result, I would very much expect that over the weekend, we we will see a number of exploit attempts against Ivanti Sentry. So better get this patched today. And otherwise, you'll end up just like the Barracuda folks where you end up with a patched but already exploited device. SecureWorks published a blog post with details about a new variant of a smoke loader that they're calling Wi-Fi Recon. What sets this particular version of smoke loader apart is that it's very aggressive in actually geolocating the device it's running on. 
To perform the geolocation, it scans for available a Wi-Fi access point and then uses a Google's API in order to translate the SSID or BSSIDs that it finds to a geolocation. This happens once a minute. So one thing that actually may be interesting uh, to sort of use sort of as a hunting rule in general is looking for access to the Google Wi-Fi location database. While there are some legitimate pieces of software that are using it, probably it should only happen fairly infrequently. Well, it uh, would be an interesting thing to look for. If uh, you find anything with that, let me know. Or if you think that this leads to too many false positives. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening. As I mentioned before this week, if you talk to anybody at Sands, well, let them know about the podcast that you like it. And that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Talk to you again on Monday. Bye.